Hello, it's Darren Epic. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe to my channel. It's about real estate in Los Angeles. Um, I'm here to help any buyers, sellers, investors, anyone. If you're looking to buy or move into LA or sell, I'm your guy, love to help you. Today we're going to talk about, uh, actually I put together a list of top three haunted houses in Los Angeles. These are real homes. Um, they're not like, you know, LA haunted hayride. They're actually real homes that people have lived in and sold. Also, I'd love it if you commented below to let me know um, what's your favorite, what you like, don't like, as well as what are you gonna dress up for Halloween as? I'm still trying to figure it out. I usually go as a silver fox. You'll see some pictures eventually. And uh, here we go into the top three haunted houses in Los Angeles. Number three, the Greystone Mansion, which at the time was called the Doheny Mansion. Uh, oil and gas tycoon, super, super rich individual named Edward Doheny, built a 46,000 square foot mansion for his son, Ned. Um, it was built on 429 acres on top of the Beverly Hills and Truesdale Estates, beautiful property, which actually today is owned by a state park, uh, or is a state park owned by Beverly Hills. But at the time it was built for $4 million. Um, in today's money, you're talking about $50 million, so insanity. But this is, you know, what happens with the rich. They, they have the money to spend and they go for it. What happened there is unfortunate. Um, there's been a book written about it called Ghost of Greystone, but basically the house was completed in 1928. Ned and his wife Lucy moved in the fall of 1928. They celebrated Christmas there with their children. And then February 16, 1929, uh, Lucy heard shots in the East Wing or another side of the house. Uh, and then they found Ned and his assistant secretary's body, Hugh Plunkett, uh, both there. Um, so they're, they're both murdered. We don't know who shot who, if one shot one and then killed the other or killed himself or it was a suicide, a murder-suicide, we don't know. Over the years, as the ghost of Greystone book, I guess, uncovers, but also others have been noted to say, workers and people over the years have lived there, uh, they've said they've seen a man in a black suit or a, a spirit or ghost, or visually it looks like a man in a black suit. Also, they've said they've seen a woman in a dress and smells of perfume, or they can smell perfume in the area um, or whisk past them. Um, very odd, very disturbing, very creepy. I don't think anyone's ever been harmed, but I haven't really read the book. But very eerie. I mean, to visit that place, it's 46,000 square feet. Uh, I definitely couldn't do it at night. Um, it's why it's number three on my list and quite disturbing. Number two, the Soudan House, or as some people call it, the Jaws House. Designed in 1926 by legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright, this house is amazing, incredible, unique, Mayan, uh, inspired, if you will, architectural, just beautiful, unique, and exceptional. That's about the most positive things that I can say that is associated with this home, because everything else is quite disturbing. Like I said, the house was built in 1926. 1945, Dr. George Hodel moved into this property. A uh, very unique, odd individual with his wife and kids, and he was a physician, uh, very tied into, you know, hip and celebrity type types in Los Angeles or cool hip Angelinos, love to throw hedonistic parties, you know, a little bit of drugs involved, which is kind of on par or on brand for Los Angeles, if you will. There must have been a lot of interesting shit going on there because this gentleman or non-gentleman, uh, Dr. George Hodel, in recent years has been suspected to be linked to the murders of Black Dahlia, uh, Elizabeth Short. Also in 1949, his his daughter ran away from home because she said she was being abused and had been raped at one of his parties. Apparently he liked to take his children downstairs into the basement and beat them. Uh, and of what so much, you know, uh, what else would have happened? Dr. George Hodel, after all these acquisitions and his daughter running away and coming back home, apparently of rape, etc., was acquitted, but he decided to sell the home and flee the country. Years go by, you know, other people live there, uh, Dr. George Hodel dies in 1999. Uh, the story goes that his son Steve, who is a retired LAPD detective, uncovers some of his father's possessions. 
and sees a photo that looks like Elizabeth Short, AKA the Black Dahlia. So he does some digging, he finds more photos, and then he starts, you know, kind of piecing it together that he might have been the Black Dahlia killer. And then as time goes on, uh, I haven't read his book, which is the Black Dahlia Avenger, uh, that came out a few years back, um, but he kind of links that there might have been other murders that happened over the years. And he believes a lot of it took, took place in the basement of this home. Very disturbing. Black Dahlia, that whole thing is just on another level of murder. I mean, what he did to that woman was disturbing. And the fact that his, his own son thinks he did it, I mean, even more so. So, Sowden House, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, it's a beautiful home. People have always wanted it, loved it, bought it. Uh, even recently, a few years back, it sold for, I think, in the mid fours or 4.69 million um, in 2018, I believe it was. So if you want this house, I mean, obviously people love it enough to buy it even with the history. Very odd, very eerie. Uh, if I did own it, I'd probably throw a Halloween party there or, you know, big events, but that's about it. I don't think I could live there. It just, it has a creepy element to it. Uh, it's, then you throw in the basement and unique architecture uh, and the Black Dahlia whole thing. I mean, that's just enough for, you know, someone like myself, I couldn't do it. Um, so number two, Sowden House or AKA the Jaws House designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. So number one, uh, probably the most infamous haunted house uh, ever in television. Um, so it's probably, that's why it's probably number one, you know, on my list as well as I've been there before, is the Murder House from the FX series, American Horror Story, uh, Murder House. This house was a big character in that show, but this house has been around since the early 1900s. It is a real house. Someone actually owns it. They bought it in 2015 for a little over $3 million. A couple did. Over a little bit of time, they've decided that they don't want to live there anymore because it's not probably the best place to raise kids. Um, they love the house. They still live there sometimes, but it sounds like when I did some research, uh, they lived there in the beginning, but once they started having some kids, they decided maybe we shouldn't live here. Maybe it's not the best place for a kid. In the nicest way possible, no shit. Uh, it's a freaking haunted house, not because of the show, but just because they said they always heard things. I mean, some people they've said went to work on the house when they bought it. They had to leave because they didn't want to work down in the basement to set up the uh, utilities and elect electrical. I mean, they would hear knocking at night. Uh, they dug up that they found out that it was a Catholic covenant for like 60 years until 1997. They found out that people had performed exorcisms there. I mean, I was in the house. Downstairs, down the basement, it's scary as hell. I don't understand how you, I mean, if you look at it, you'll see the pictures. It's creepy. It's a, it's beautiful, but it's creepy. It would be very, it's very cultish, very gothic. Uh, very unique. I can see why they bought it, I guess, but it's definitely like better served as like a haunted house or filming location. Uh, but it's a real place. Like I said, they've said over the years, they've heard knocking, noises. She's never seen a spirit, the owner, the wife. They said, people have said they've seen what they think is an empty rocking chair or a butler coming down the stairs or a soft scream from a child you know, downstairs spirits. They don't think anyone's gonna bother anyone, but if there's nuns that might have died there or exorcism performed by a, a pastor or priest, yeah, there's freaking ghosts there. So besides the show, maybe watch the show, you'll see, but it's a real live home. I've been there. It made my hair stand up when I was there. Just every little thing about it is just cold and disturbing. And just, you just can tell that Someone's died there, or many people have. It's in Arlington Heights, it's in the middle of the city. Um, you'll see the dress below, but there, there's some pictures here. Last year they did a Halloween like haunted house where you could actually go check it out. Um, I think now they're using it as a gimmick, but it is a creepy place. Um, so like I said, great place, but I wouldn't want to live there. In closing, uh, a lot of these homes, or all three of these, I mean, given what I know now, there is no way in hell I could live there. Beautiful homes, I could sell them. I would help someone buy them if they really want to buy them or help a, a seller sell them because they are, you know, two of them are unique. I mean, obviously the Greystone Mansion, you can't sell because it's owned by the city of Beverly Hills and it's a state park. Or, you know, maybe you could later, but probably not in my lifetime. Um, but 
the two properties, the Frank Lloyd Wright and the Rosenheim Mansion, I mean, or AKA Murder House, they're unique properties, but I'd maybe, you know, throw a party at them, uh, rent them out, use them as a filming location. Uh, I don't see how these people live there, um, but you know, each their own. Like I said before, if you like the video, like it. If you've never uh, subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, I'd love it if you comment below, let me know what you think your favorite house is. And also just tell me what you're gonna dress up for Halloween. Have a great day, happy Halloween.